Let's talk about classes in Ruby. So we did a little uh, demo in the last segment. I think we overrode a method on an existing class. So we kind of saw some syntax already, but let's revisit classes. So Ruby does support this concept. And similar to Java, Ruby supports single inheritance. You cannot have um, multiple parent classes. So multiple inheritance like languages um, C++, for example, lets us do that. In Ruby, we have single inheritance. Um, and every, everything is um, really a class. So if, if we just take an integer, we can call the class method on it, and it displays the type or the name of the class. So a integer is of class fixed num. And we could also call class on that. So we could do something like this. The class of the fixed num class is actually class, right? So this is similar to the reflection APIs that you might have already played with in, in Java. So um, I can also ask for the class of my integer and then I could say, what's the superclass of that class? So if I say superclass on here, it prints out integer. Okay, so it's so far I've got fixed num, which is a child of integer. And I could actually proceed right up the hierarchy here. If I call superclass, what's the superclass of integer? It's a class called numeric. What's the class of that object? Okay. What's the class of object? Or the parent class of object? Basic object. Nil. Okay. You said nil, so I'm running 1.9. You're probably running 1.8. Okay, so we do end up ultimately at a parent class, and everything else descends from that. Um, Stephen, what did you say was the difference between 5.class class and um, like 5. Superclass? Well, 5.class returns the class of <clears throat> the object, which is a fixed num in this case, or an integer. When I called class the second time, I'm saying, what's the class of the fixed num class? Okay, and that happens to be a class object. Okay, but then I switched it. I said, well, what's the super class of fixed num? That's where we got integer back. Okay, so super class is the parent. And in the first example, I was saying, what is the class of the class object that we got back representing fixed num? And that's class with a capital C. Okay, does everybody see the, the difference there? So the point of this is, you know, we have these, these inheritance um, hierarchies in Ruby, very similar to what you've seen in other languages like, like Java. So let's go ahead and write um, our first class from scratch. Um, I don't know where I was here, but we'll try 9. And so we start out by using the uh, keyword class. And I'm going to name my class tree. And let me just type it up, and then I'll come back and I'll explain to you kind of what, what this does. So it's a very short, small class. Okay, so there's my class definition. Um, you'll notice, first of all, that class names in Ruby start with a capital um, letter. And unlike variable names, which we said the common approach is to use underscores to separate the different words in the variable name, with class names in Ruby, the convention is to go camel case um, with them. Now, 
when we refer to instance variables within the class, we're going to use the amper, um, the at symbol. So you can see right here, I'm referencing these variables at children and at name are actually instance variables. And they're defined right up here. So this attr underscore accessor is doing a couple things for me. First of all, it's defining two instance variables. Okay, so the colon children, colon node underscore name are saying these are going to be instance variables. And this thing also generates for me setters and getters. Okay, so I will have a way to set these values and get these values. So that single declaration there um, does all that for me. So we'll use ATTR accessor for defining attributes of our classes. And there's other ways, other ways you can do this um, as, as well. Um, the other thing you'll notice here is this function or this method called initialize. And whenever I create an instance of this class, it's going to actually invoke this method and run it. So this is, this is like your constructor in Java. So initialize is going to be used when we create a new instance of one of these things. And then after that, I've got these two methods, visit all and visit. And they take a block reference. So we kind of saw that syntax right at the end of yesterday's session. Um, so we can pass a block of code in here and visit all simply calls visit on the current object reference, right? So when I have the visit there, I don't specify an object. The implication here is that it's calling it on self. And the reference to self in the second method here is basically referring to the object instance that I'm calling this on behalf of. So self here in Ruby is analogous to the this reference that you've encountered in Java and C++ in the past. So what I have here is a really simple tree data structure. Okay, and what I can do with this very simple thing is I can create trees and I can traverse trees using these visits. I can visit a tree and just print out a single node, or I can call visit all and it will recursively actually invoke um, visit everything. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed part of my implementation here. You'll probably scratch your head going, how is that visit all working? Um, we have to visit each of the children. And then I'll put my block here and say see visit Sorry about that. Okay, so now that I have my implementation complete, let's go ahead and, and use it. So I'm going to show you one more thing. Um, let's write a program, and I'm going to use um, this thing. So I'm going to use this require statement, and I'm going to say in my current directory, I guess I called it ex. Nine. So require here says just load up that Ruby that's in that file and um, let's just make this a little more clear. So I'm going to, I was missing that, let's just call this tree. And then I'll say All right, so this require here is very much like a, a pound include or, or an import statement. Or, it's basically saying, get this code module out there and include it in my current context. So once I have that, I can now create a tree. So I could say my, my Ruby tree is equal to, and I can create new objects by referencing the class and calling the new method on the class. And you'll remember in my initialize, I had two parameters. I had a name, so I'll just go like that. And then the second parameter was a array of children. So I can put a, um, I'll put it on the next line. I'll just define myself an array here. And inside this array, um, I'll do something like this. I'll say tree.new dot 
And then I'm doing, I'm calling the constructor again here. So in here, I'm going to pass Oops, I think I think I got those all balanced out. You're missing one more bracket. Well, I'm not done yet. So I'm going to put a second. Uh, so this first, that first at the outer level is going to have two children, Mac and PC. Okay, and then I'll close that brace off, and then I'll close off. Okay, I'm missing a parenthesis somewhere. Oh, I see it. I see it. There. Now, that matches. Okay. So that creates a tree, and Ruby is at the root. It's got two children, Mac and PC, and Mac has two children, iPhone and Android. Okay, does everybody see that? How we kind of created this in that statement. And I could now say, let's do some visiting here. So we'll visit just a node. If I call Ruby tree dot visit, so that was the one method, and we'll describe the argument into my block as a node. And we'll just print out that node's name. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm passing a block of code to this method visit. And remember, visit calls the block on that particular node. So it should just print out the name of my tree. And then we can also print out the entire tree. So we can visit every node. by calling the other method. And we'll pass the same block. OK, and then I'm going to go ahead and run this. Yeah, Typo. Missed an eye down there. Okay, that didn't look good. So I'm missing something else. No, I think that's okay. I yeah, I'm wondering if I'm wondering if I forgot something. This looks oh, there it is. I used the wrong name here. All right, so now we're in good shape. 